welcome to another edition of Three Cloud Videos. My name is John Bloom, and I'm a principal consultant at Three Cloud Consulting. And today I would like to talk about Azure Spring Cloud. So Azure Spring Cloud is an offering by Microsoft, which allows you to use the Spring Boot language, which is Java-based, to the cloud using microservices. Here you can see we started with a quick application, quick start. And there's a few prerequisites to get started. And then we just followed the script. So the nice thing is there's a spring initializer found here. And what you do is you enter in your parameters and generate the code. It downloads a zip file, which we'll use later in the project. There are several cloud examples for the spring cloud already on the GitHub site. One of the requirements is the Spring Framework, which we had to install. We also had to install the Azure Toolkit for IntelliJ. What is IntelliJ? Well, it's a cool tool that I found, and basically it allows you to write the code in the IDE. And there's two flavors, the Ultimate and the Community. I use the Community Edition. This one has a 30-day trial. We also have to install the Azure CLI. We also had to install Groovy. So this is it in Azure, the Azure Spring Cloud. But first I'd like to show you a little bit about the IDE in the environment. So this is called the IntelliJ environment and you can create new projects. You can hook it up to Git. There's a whole bunch you can do with it. But for this project, we created the shell, doing file new, create a project. It created the structure and then we ingested the, the zip file that we got earlier from the website. And here you can see the source files that it, it generated for us. Here's your Java application file, the Java file. And then a nice thing about this is it has this, this button over here that you can press. And by doing so, you can specify a lot of different things. Uh, the project SDK obviously is going to need a version of Java. And I did try a few different versions, the 1.8. I had better luck with the 16. And just remember, you have to set your environment variables and your class path and such so that it can talk to the Java. Next, we set our modules. And this is kind of cool because basically you can set the source. So this is the Java. That's a source file. The resources is a resource file. And then we have our test. And then we have files that we can exclude over here. Next, we can add libraries. We, had a, we chose the Maven type of project when we created this. Uh, if you remember, if we go back to our... Uh, screen over here. It's a Maven project using the Java language and it specifies this. Uh, you also can specify um, a bunch of stuff here. But regardless, uh, back to the IDE. Uh, we also have artifacts. And what this does is you set, at the end of the day, we're going to produce a jar file. And this is the jar file. And it has a bunch of uh, parameters that you can set. It, it kind of filled those in for us. And, and we also have SDKs and global libraries. So that's just a little background on that, sort of configuration settings. The next thing is we did is we build the application. And after a few tries, a few tries, I would say, um, we were able to compile the application, which is nice. And then it also has a feature that we can log into Azure. So if we select our subscription, you can see I use my uh, Visual Studio MPN uh, setting there. And then the next trick is to deploy it. So what you do is you click up the run uh, based on your configuration file. So you create a configuration file, which I just named it here. It already pre-populated the artifact. You specify your subscription. Um, suffice to say, the Spring Cloud does appear. And then it built the, you have the option to build it. Um, we also have a public endpoint. In this case, I said disable and persistence disable in the Java version. Well, I think I selected the Lebanon when I actually deployed it. So you run this. And it ran without errors, which was nice. It took about a minute or so, a few minutes. And then if we pop on over to the website, after we, let me just back up a step. We, we created the Azure Spring Cloud. And the way you do that is you click the create button. And then at the end of the day, a few minutes later, uh, you get this. And this is your, your Azure Spring Cloud. I added the log analytics by default and the application insight. So if you click on this button, it'll take us to another page. And from here, you can click on apps. And you can see that there's the Spring Boot Cloud GB app. If you click on it, it's up and running. If you click on the test, 
you can see greetings from Azure Spring Cloud. So successful end-to-end. -end. We installed the IDE. We downloaded the project using the Spring Initializer. We created the uh, project and configured a lot of the, the underneath the hood uh, requirements. There's quite a few that we had to go through. Uh, but at the end of the day, it did deploy successfully. And that's what I wanted to show. So why would you use this? Well, we would use the Java microservices to connect to a variety of different sources on the Azure site. So just as an example, you can do Cosmos, HD Insight, SQL Server Big Data Cluster, and Azure Synapse. Now, the nice thing about it is that some of this code is already pre-written for you. So if you're familiar with Java, uh, basically your class does a lot of the heavy lifting with just a few lines of code. So I highly recommend it. I'm getting to use it on my next project. So I just wanted to do a quick uh, Camtasia video about it. And um, I wanted to thank you for, uh, for watching. If you want to discuss the topic further or have questions on Azure or Power Platform, click the link below for more information. We'll be happy to discuss it with you further. Thanks for watching.